Okay, welcome. Um, today we're going to go through uh, this particular patch on the Rossum assimilator, which is over here. Um, and the thing that I'm sort of highlighting here is the facility that the Rossum has for this um, cyclical um, approach. And the cycle approach, um, in sampling terms, kind of means something like round robin. And that in itself is uh, is a really good thing to have in a sampler. Um, but of course, I'm not using it. I'm kind of using it in a round robin approach. But really, I'm kind of using it as a kind of a uh, almost like a hocketing um, sort of uh, facility, um, rather than using it for round robin. And then, of course, if you've seen my other videos to do with uh, Ableton Live, you'll also know that there's a Max for Life plugin that is called Hocket, and. Um, and it occurred to me um, not so long ago that actually I could use the assimilator in pretty much the same sort of way. So we're going to go through um, the patch. Um, essentially, the cyclical sort of parts are really sort of cycling from one through to four. So we'll have a look at that. And we'll also have a look at the other sort of modulation sources that are going on. Let me just walk you through a couple of the modulation and um, sort of ideas that I'm having at the moment. The attenuverter for two on maths is essentially um, scaling or the uh, envelopes. So let's have a listen to that. So that's what we have for uh, channel two on maths. Uh, channel three is controlling uh, bit reduction. So if you've seen some of the other assimilator videos that I've been uh, making over these last sort of month or so, then um, you will have seen me sort of using the uh, bit reduction um, as a kind of a creative thing, really, I suppose. Uh, and it's under this mutate button here. So let's have a listen to that one. So that's what we have there with Maths uh, Attenuverter um, for channel three. Now what you can also hear is this kind of um, squarpy little sort of click that sounds kind of percussive. Um, and this is basically coming from channel one of Maths. So the end of four from channel four is triggering channel one. And channel one is essentially going uh, to modulate a parameter which is the anti-aliasing or anti-aliasing uh, parameter on the Rossum. Let me take that out. That's what it sounds like. So you can hear that, right? So if I change the shape here of the envelope, we hardly hear anything. So we're really looking to kind of trigger the threshold, as it were, when it kind of starts to poke through. So that if I change four, Sort of changes the triggers going to channel one. But what four is also doing is controlling the uh, the um, opening and closing of the of the VCA for the kick drum. So as the kick drum disappears, becomes more clicky. The anti-aliasing comes to the four. At least that's the idea. So kind of an interesting approach.
what we have are four channels of bass. One, two, three, and four. So the way that the, and you can see that the first channel is set to master and the rest is set to cycle. So once it reaches, the encounters the next master, which is here, it goes back to the top of its kind of group. So if we wanted to make this a threes cycle instead of a fours, we basically just take this one out of cycle mode and that turns into three. If we wanted to have it as two, so you can see here in the activity lights, just those two there and now three and four are no longer active and if we just wanted to hear it as oh, sorry the encoder if you do get it the encoder is a little bit slow it doesn't respond as quickly as I think it should so that's the line right it's just a nice line right into cycle mode so now this is that hocketing aspect because because uh, channel 2 is at a different pitch as you can see it's at plus 3 so channel 1 is at 0 and channel 2 is at plus 3 so we get two different pitches so whatever the sequence data is that's coming from uh, the micro ornament and crime from the sequence uh, dual sequencing app that's a lot of sequencing going on there but anyway from the dual sequencing app sequence um, this uh, plus three being a minor third above whatever zero is um, the whatever the incoming sort of sequence data is it's going to be three plus or minus whatever the um, the value is that's coming in right let me put the third one back in. Let's have a look at the third one. So the pitch here is basically zero, but just as much could be a semitone. Or... So whatever we've programmed in the sequencer, depending on what pitches we set in terms of the sample, will also then create another another layer of kind of uh, variation for the melody, right? We can take this up to plus 10, which be the inversion of minus 2. Let me take that back down. Let me do that at 7, which puts it, put it, puts it a fifth above. Now the thing is, it need actually only get, let me take this sequence, the volts per octave. There we go. So that's taking the volts per octave out, putting them back in. Bring that back down to zero. Oh, it could be two. Let's try two. So therefore, basically, it's the, it's the neighbor of three, which is the one above it. So in some ways, you've, you've kind of got to um, kind of calculate the offsets based on the sequencer and based on the pitch or semitone offsets that you might well apply in the sampler. So let's factor in the last one and turn that one to cycle as well. So now we get the four. And there we go. So that's what we have there. So the pitch information is coming in from CVC and that's coming off the sequence app. We'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, let's return back to one and have a look at the different kinds of settings. So you can see here the pitch information is coming in from CVC. So that's here. Uh, we're not using linear or uh, exponential FM. Nothing on the level page. So in the phase modulation, we're not even using that, though I'm sure there'll be a video for phase modulation at another time, just not right now. Uh, and then on the mutate, so we've got CVB is set for the, um, for the incoming modulation, which is this one, and this is coming off of maths. So you've got this cable here that's coming from here. So let me put that one in. Actually, let me just change this a little bit so that we can um, we can hear everything. Let 
let me just put this one into master. So we'll just hear the effect on, on one channel first of all. So down, let me reduce the bits from 21 to 14. So you can hear that, again, much like with many other things in terms of this patch, really looking for a, a kind of a threshold point. And then of course, it's really a matter of kind of taste. I suppose, if you can call bit reduction tasteful. We wait for it to cycle around again. Start poking through. I've got it on really slow modulation. At least it's not one of the sloths. <laughs> It'll be even slower. You just hear it poking through now. So what you can also see is I have on 2A, we seem to have a little invader. Um, what we also have is on the, let me just move this over here so you can see that. In 2A, we have the, uh, <laughs> finally it made an appearance. <laughs> so again, as an additional sort of global attenuator using channel three here, to uh, attenuate the effect of this overall. And as you can tell, that's probably way too much. So somewhere around about there, let's leave that there. Uh, and I'll take the bits back up to 21. What we also have is the aliasing, and, and here, aliasing is going to come off of channel one of math. So I'll put the trigger back in. So again, we can control the depth, the amount of aliasing that's going on from zero right the way through to 100. And again, find the point where it seems to poke through. And again, here we can control the amount of uh, controlling the, um, the scale of the modulation that's coming in. And here, shaping the envelope. And remember, it's receiving its triggers from four the end of fall. So by changing the fall shape of channel four, affects how we hear this aliasing figure. It could be something sort of cyclical, sort of repeating like that. This is all four channels back in, and this time. So number two controls the strength of the envelope, how open it is, how close it is. Three controls the bit reduction effect, which will make an appearance at some point. Like I said, it's on a slow modulation. Here it comes. So we have that. And then finally on A, we have the aliasing. So I'm gonna put the kick drum back in. This kick drum is from um, Samples from Mars. It's their 101 uh, drum set, the SH-101 drum set. And because I'm controlling the VCA here with four, this kind of controls how much is actually coming through. Let's look at the micro ornament and crime. So I'm using both channels here. 
Uh, channel one, this one here, is used for the um, for the pitch sequence. So the pitch sequence is, is it's running in sevens. So we have zero, seven, zero, an octave, three, so a minor third, zero, ten, which is the flat seven, and then to the end of the sequence. So that's running in sevens. So when you look at this uh, channel, so this is running in eights, this, this sequence apart, you see the difference between a, a dash and a square. So a dash means that the gate is open and the square means the gate is closed. So that's essentially the information that's going over to the uh, assimilator. So that's one in every eight on the back beat afterwards. And that's kind of the idea. It's sort of a static kind of house chord. That's what we have there. Now what we can also do is obviously change the length of it in terms of the sequence pattern, change it to threes, fours, and so on. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, there will be some other videos on the assimilator. Um, for the meantime, if you liked it, please remember to like and subscribe and uh, see you next time. Bye for now.